Hey, good morning. I want to talk about um, childbirth, labor, and delivery at a hospital. And what I pack in my maternity bag, my child's diaper bag, boy or girl, and um, what else I take and stuff like that to the labor and delivery. Um, maybe this will help you during your experience, you know, mom to mom. I've been a mom for 10 years now. She'll be 11 in April. She was born on my ex-husband's birthday, April 9th. Um, so, child labor is like this. Um, with her, with her. This is the only experience that I've had. Um, she was late a week. So I, I reached my due date that the doctor gave me, but she was one week after her due date. Um, so I was in my mom's house because I didn't want to be alone when I went into labor. So I was sitting there watching TV and drinking chocolate milk and stuff like that on my phone, watching TV. And I started having painful bowel movements. I didn't think that I was in labor, but the doctor had told me I had, I was dilating. Dilation is when your cervix begins to open up for the baby to come out. But they said, you're late. It's not time for you to go in to the hospital and we're not going to induce you to go back home because towards the end of the pregnancy, you have to go to the doctor every week during the last month. At least I did. So I have started having painful bowel movements, but I was those were contractions. I, you know, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, but there was some bowel movement there. But those were still contractions. You know, I'm like, this is strange. So my mind, I, so finally I realized I was in labor, you know, in full, full-term labor. And I called my mom home from work, and I said, I need you to take me to the hospital. It's time to go. It's time to have a baby. So um, we went to Sinai Grace Hospital on the west side of Detroit on Outer Drive. And they gave me a room, and the doctors came in. There were like four or five students sitting there, and the nurses and all. And they cocked my legs back and put a mirror in front. And I could see the baby's head coming out as soon as I laid down. Her name is Havila. So she had a full head of pitch black hair. So I could see her coming out. Um, so they told me to push every 10 seconds. They said push, breathe, push, breathe, push, breathe every 10 seconds. So I did. The labor at lasted six hours and I, not, no, eight hours and I slept through most of it. So it started at nine or some a.m. and ended at like six or something like that. Or five. Started at nine or ten a.m. and ended at six p.m. So she was born and she was healthy. She was ten pounds. They told me she'd be seven pounds. When I reached the delivery room, and she was 10 pounds. So she was a pretty big girl, but her dad was big. So, yep, she was born right on, right healthy and everything else like that. That's my girl. So what do I put in my maternity bag? Women love maternity bags, and I feel so good about that because I love them, too. They smell good. They are nice to have around. They make a woman feel good. They make everybody feel good. Maternity bags are wonderful. So I put um, <clears throat> um, I put my, and they normally, mine are normally a big bag because I, with Havila, I had to stay in the hospital two or three days after the birth. Cause they said I lost a lot of blood. So 
Um, and I did bleed for one month after she was born. Every day. And I had to get 12 stitches in my perineum where she came out at because she was pretty big. Um, but I packed perineum spray for me. Um, socks and shoes, clothes, toothbrush, toothpaste, hair comb, hairbrush. Um, pajamas, um, slippers or footies or something like that, um, lip gloss or Vaseline or something like that, um, um, what else, um, pads for the bleeding, you know, stuff like that, uh, but the hospital also provides stuff for mom and baby. Most hospitals do. They ask you, do you need anything? Ask you, you know, are you comfortable? You know, do you, are you going to be able to feed the baby? Are you going to breastfeed? Are you going, do you need some type of connections to help you through this first earliest stages of the child's life? And so on and so forth, depending on where you live. And <clears throat> I pack my cell phone. I like to pack a laptop with Wi-Fi cameras, um, stuff like that. Um, so in the diaper bag, I put diapers and wipes, bottles, formula, baby formula, which is milk, like Infamil or, uh, Similac. I, I, I have never used Similac. I, I'm not, I've heard so many Strange things about Similac, but it sounded like they were jealous of Similac. I don't know. Maybe I'll try that one day. But I predominantly use Infamil. Uh, bottled water for the, to mix the Infamil with. Um, rattles. Uh, baby toys. Uh, Baby socks, baby outfits, baby hairbrush, baby comb, uh, books to read the baby, um, and a car seat with stroller. So I take all that stuff in there. It's not really that hard, you know. No, no, I leave the car seat in the car if possible. You know, right now we don't have a car, but you got to get to and from the hospital. So you're going to have to have that car seat and stroller regardless, or just a car seat, either or. Because you can't get in there without, you can't get in a vehicle with, with a newborn without a car seat. That's illegal, at least where I am. Um... So, yep, that's what I bring. Um, childbirth is very interesting. It's an experience. It's a transition. And I would uh, encourage anyone who is a lover of people and a lover of um, life to experience women, women who are lovers of people and lovers of life, I would suggest you um, consider giving birth to a child. So have a blessed morning. And this is Kristen from the West Side of Detroit, Michigan, United States. Bye-bye.